Pre-made characters, they don't have the nuance or any of the different diversity and interesting things that really apply to the specific player who plays them. So why do you even have them? Well, actually there's a lot of great reasons to use pre-made characters, and that's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. Hey everybody, my name's Joe, and welcome to Tabletop Theory, where we talk about things like counseling theory, educational theory, and how to become a good game master. Today we're not really talking about any of the theory, but we are going to talk about some of the gaming, specifically pre-made characters that exist for your game. Now, pre-made characters, in my opinion, have a bit of a bad rap, because I feel like those characters that are made by the game designers for things like Dungeons and Dragons, or Shadowrun, or whatever, they're seen as sort of one-dimensional. They're not necessarily very interesting to the people who have been playing for a long time. But in the right game, I feel like pre-made characters are actually better than characters made by the players. Let me explain. Everybody likes to make their own characters. When I was younger, I had an entire stack of characters that I just kept making. As soon as I started playing a new game system, Vampire, I have an entire portfolio. I still do, it's like right over here. Hang on, let me find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is. Yep. Right here. So this entire thing of characters that I made once upon a time were nothing but World of Darkness character sheets. All of these characters I made in high school and I still have them. In fact, most of them ended up becoming NPCs for my games later, but that's a different story. For most people, pre-made characters exist to be a stepping stone, just like I said. If you're a new storyteller or you're a new player and you need to learn the system, a pre-made character is a great way to do that. You don't necessarily have to put a lot of thought into the background or the actions or the behaviors. All you really need to look at are the statistics so that you can understand what dice to roll and when. But I feel like for seasoned players and experienced storytellers, pre-made characters can actually be really helpful to try to accomplish a lot of different types of storytelling goals that you might not have thought of before. If you have pre-made characters for players that are used to playing a certain type of character, I know that lots of the people that I've played with over the years have a preference for sorcerers, warlocks, magic users of some kind, or if you're like me, you have a preference for playing muscle wizards like barbarians. Pre-made characters are great for pushing people out of their comfort zone. Now, yeah, I did talk about that in a previous video, but I still think it bears repeating. Role-playing games are best, in my opinion, whenever the players get the opportunity to explore things that they might not have explored in the past. Now, I'm not talking about grandiose things like morality and ethics and things like that, although there is a time and a place for that. I'm talking about things like understanding different types of rule sets to help them become better players when they eventually go back to playing the types of characters that they're accustomed to playing. Because in most cases, we grow as people when we have new experiences, but I think that having the experience of playing new types of characters can be very valuable for experienced players that might have gotten stuck in a bit of a rut over the last several games or campaigns that they've played. If you have a player that consistently plays bards or very loud rogues, maybe give them something like a quiet and pensive barbarian that really just doesn't talk much, or when they do talk, it's predominantly nonverbal, and then whenever they rage, it's an explosion of energy and emotion, and you still still have that player being comfortable playing the loud and animated and brash character, but only in certain circumstances. Pre-made characters are really good for helping to put people into circumstances where they actually have to role play, and that's one of the wonderful things about them. The other benefit of a pre-made character is that if they die, who cares? Nobody cares because they're pre-made and the player didn't end up putting a whole bunch of effort and creativity into them, and then when the pre-made character inevitably falls into a pit of lava while being eaten by some kind of horde of goblins, nobody cares. It's sad for maybe a minute, and you're like, Thrax, you're dead. I hardly knew you, but I also don't care. It's cool because the character's gone, but you didn't really put a lot of effort into it. A really great way to use pre-made characters that I love and I had a previous GM do for me is to actually have a couple of pre-made characters assigned to a player. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, I'm going to reference the role-playing game system for Battlestar Galactica. If you've never played it, I highly recommend going and checking it out. There's going to be a link down in the comment section. That is a really cool role-playing system for the show, Battlestar Galactica. The new show, not the old show, although it's kind of the same show. Battlestar Galactica, for those of you that don't know, it's basically like taking the Expanse and dipping it into the West Wing. There's fighting outside the ship, there's political intrigue inside the ship, there's big ship-to-ship -ship combat, there's little ship-to-ship -ship combat, there's interpersonal drama happening, and it's 
really hard to have one character who is playable in all of those different circumstances. So what this GM did is he gave me one character who was a Viper pilot, and then he gave me one character who was a commander of a destroyer. So whenever this small intership combat of like Vipers on Cylons happened, I had a role. And then if we had something that was much larger, like political intrigue, then you still have a character to play. And every player in this campaign, there were about five of us, had two or so characters that we were in charge of. Now, what happened if one of the characters died? Like, I had my Viper pilot. He died. He was killed on an assault mission. It was okay, because he died, and then I just assumed the role of another Viper pilot who then had to react to the loss of a comrade in battle. That type of character development is really important because characters die in TV shows all the time, but in role-playing games, it's a little less common, especially if you have a game where people are really attached to their characters that they've spent so much time developing or understanding or really trying to wrap their head around and try to work into a party. But if you have a game where people die all the time, the stakes are different. They give you the opportunity as a storyteller to really drop the axe on a character that might do something that would realistically get them killed, like my character. Rest in peace, Pops. Jumping back and forth between characters was a lot of fun because it allowed me to try to shift roles between those characters quickly, but not really. It usually felt very natural. It helped me to really feel like I had a lot of important kind of roles in everything that was going on in the game. It didn't make me feel like I was left out whenever there was a Viper combat situation because I was only playing the commander of the ship, or it didn't make me feel like I was left out when there were larger political intrigues to play because I was only playing a Viper pilot. So consider how in your games, maybe giving your players a couple of different pre-made characters to actually grab a hold of and play might benefit the type of story that you're trying to tell. Because pre-made characters, like I said, they're useful for being throwaway characters, but they're also useful for trying to get people into role-playing situations that they might not have been involved with had they not had these characters given to them. Now there is something to say about the idea of consent. Sometimes you can push a player too far. Sometimes people have comfort zones that they're not comfortable leaving, and that's fine. If you want to try to get on the same page as your players, that's not a bad thing. Asking for input is a good thing. Helping to reduce the amount of choices for certain types of characters can also be very helpful if you have a player that might be suffering from something like decision fatigue. They might not feel comfortable like they're going to make the right decision if they're creating a character that is completely new to them. They might not know all the intricacies of creating a wizard if all they're used to playing are barbarians. You might be able to make a better barbarian or a better wizard for them if they're new to those types of characters. And the same thing applies if you're doing something like what my old GM did back when we were playing Battlestar Galactica. I didn't really know all the rules for Viper combat or ship-to-ship -ship combat or social combat. Yes, that's a thing. As I got used to understanding how those characters actually worked, I was able to help have a bit more of a creative control over some of the characters that were created for me. The GM still gave those characters to me and I'm glad that he did because that helped him to feel like he was a little bit more in control of the story that he wanted to tell while still involving the players as the characters that were written into that story. And in that case, that's really more like actors playing roles on a television show like Battlestar Galactica. As actors get used to their characters, most of the time, they actually start to feel like they can talk to the writers, talk to the directors to say like, hmm, yeah, no, I don't think my character would ever do that. Back when I was working on films and television, I remember doing a photo shoot for one of the seasons of Breaking Bad. And the photographer was like, okay, Brian, stand with your arms crossed. He looked at the photographer and said, no, he's not an arms crossed kind of guy. And the photographer's like, oh, okay, um, stand how you feel like your character would stand. And he did. The same principle applies if you're talking about a pre-made character that you're going to provide to your players. Initially, they might feel like they're trying to wrap their mind around how this character actually functions, but as they might play him over a couple of sessions, they're going to start to feel a great deal more confidence and comfort in making character and moral and ethical decisions as these particular characters so that they can start to inhabit these roles a little bit better. So that's all I've got. Pre-made characters, they're not just for new players. They're for all levels of players and all levels of storytellers. If you use pre-made characters in your games, I want to know. You can talk about it down here in the comment section, or you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, because I feel like pre-made characters in a lot of cases get a bad rap. But if you feel like this is something that you can use in your own games, I would love to hear about how you do it.
So self-care is something I've talked about a little bit on this channel in the past, and I feel like it's time for me to take some of my own medicine. Over the last few months, I've done my very best to try to provide content every week to you all. My old channel tag used to say, new videos every Thursday at lunch. But as the school semester has started to kick back up again, I work professionally in higher education, um, I've found that it's really hard for me to balance being a good employee, being a good content creator, and being a good husband. All of those things are really important to me, and I feel like in order for me to be successful in all of those three areas, I need to engage in some self-care for myself. And what that means for me is that the videos might be a little bit slower on the release. I'm going to be releasing probably about two videos a month now. That way I can achieve the same high level of product for you all, but I can still be as good as an employee or a husband that I want to be. So thank you for your understanding. Thank you for watching. Take care, be kind, and have fun adventuring.